Okay, so now again, moving back, um, the other thing you want to look for when inspecting your front band is your alignment with the stock ferrule. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, on either side, you want to make sure that there's not a huge offset, that one side of the stock isn't hanging off of one side or the other. Uh, if you do have that kind of a condition, then that's something you really need to get your action uh, custom fit to the to the stock. Yeah. So again, right here, this side's uh, relatively flush, and this side over here, you've got somewhat of an overhang. Okay. So uh, again, what that means is the front band isn't centered on the stock, and that's going to create some. Uh, some negative impulses, I guess, is the, the best way I can really describe it as the bullet travels down. It's going uh, it's gonna to cause some inconsistencies from shot to shot, and that's something, again, that you want to. Now, if it's really, really bad, it's really going to affect you a lot. If it's, this isn't really too bad, I've seen, I've seen worse. And uh, if it's not too bad, you're probably okay. But if it is really bad, you want to have uh, something modified in your stock, or you want to have your stock glass bedded. To the action to get that all fixed. Okay, so this is where we're really going to start getting into some more meat and potatoes of accuracy. This mating surface right here is basically the bread and butter of M14 accuracy. Okay, um, so if you want a rifle that shoots really consistent, we have to have what's called draw pressure. And what draw pressure is, is the barrel should be pulling up on the stock. So the stock, you should have, you should have two opposing forces, right, um, pulling against each other, okay, and it needs to be the right direction. So the barrel should be pulling up and the stock should be pulling down, okay. Now this particular rifle, there's something going on with the receiver geometry, the way it fits into the stock, where this actually has negative draw pressure. So not only do we not have that opposing force, I actually, it's actually pushing down, the barrel right now is pushing down on the stock and the stock is pushing up on the barrel. Okay, so I actually have to grab this and pull it up just to get these two mating surfaces to touch. Okay, normally you should be able to grab this and spread them apart. But you see right here that I'm actually able to get a patch and slip that in between there. I should not be able to do that. Okay, so that obviously um, really, really needs to get fixed. Okay, now the other thing you want to look for in this area are the vertical surfaces between the front band and the stock ferrule. Okay, so these two surfaces, you should be able to see some daylight there, which I do. So as long as they're, these two vertical surfaces are not touching, you're good to go. Okay, um, if they are, then again, the, uh, the whole stock needs to be bedded or custom fit to the action to correct these because all this stuff is set during glass bedding. Okay, I'll show you um, what a proper fitting stock should look like. Okay, so what you have here is another example of a gas system that's put together properly. Okay, um, so again we have uh, clearance on our vertical surfaces but also now you see that we have the proper stock pressure. So we have the proper opposing forces on this particular one. So when I push, if I have to push the barrel down to get the lip of the front band to separate from the stock ferrule. So you see right there, you see that springy action. So when I let it go, my barrel is naturally pulling up on the stock. And that's how you want it to fit. Okay. Now there is a spec um, that somebody uh, one of the military teams, uh, they designated, I think it was seven pounds of pressure. How to measure that, I don't know. Maybe you can hang a weight off the end of the barrel or something like that. But again, um, this is this is what you're supposed to see. Okay, um, so to be able to put a patch in here, you need to be able to push down on this and work that in there. Okay, and that's actually uh, a critical lubrication point as well. Okay, so again, um, super, super important. Pay very close attention to this area of the rifle. Alright, so the next area that we're going to talk about is the handguard fit. Okay, the handguard fit um, to the stock. It, it, 
When the handguard's installed, there should not be any contact between the handguard and the stock along the travel from front to rear. Okay, um, this may or may not cause an accuracy problem, but again, competition rifles, they have this area cleared, and honestly, it only takes about 20 minutes with some sandpaper um, to clear this and to make sure that it's not a disturbing factor for your rifle. Okay, and it should be clear on both ends. So I'll give you an illustration again. of a proper, uh, properly cleared stock. Okay, again, this one here, I cleared this one myself with some sandpaper. I basically put a line of tape um, denoting where I wanted the line to be. I left the tape there and I just sanded down my fiberglass um, handguard until I had the proper clearance. And then I just trial fit it. Now, another thing that some people like to do, um, there's this is one of those debatable issues. Some people glue the handguard to the front band, okay, and they think that that um, mating those two pieces together can help in accuracy. Some military teams did that, and other military teams made sure that this was actually kind of fitting and flopping around there, uh, kind of a, almost free floating, if you will. Um, so again, I I don't think it really, really makes too big of an accuracy difference as far as whether or not it's allowed to flop around, but it definitely you definitely want it clear of the stock all the way through the travel from front to rear on both sides.